Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group, and I'll tell you what, it's an action packed day for you. Today is actually June 20th. And let's buckle up for these stories. First coming around the corner, Trump says he'll restart oil drilling in Alaska Wildlife Refuge. I think it's actually a good thing. I'll go into why here in just a second. Offshore wind energy will come at a high cost to Northeast taxpayers. Really? That's a shocker. France should ban Russian LNG soon, Senate committee says. I don't know that I'd listen to them, but... We'll see who if they actually do or not. BlackRock, desperate to shed ESG reputation. I got really tickled at that story. Here comes one coming around the corner. Inadvertent geoengineering researchers say low sulfur shipping rules made climate change worse. You can't buy this kind of entertainment. They're trying to do something good. And it just makes climate change worse. Let's go to the last story here. Gas rush could hike UK energy bills and inflation. I'll tell you what, I have never seen so many kind of crazy times that we're having right now in the energy news space. Let's start with our first story today. Trump says he'll restart oil drilling in Alaska Wildlife Refuge. I want to just first say a shout out to our great oil and gas exploration and production uh, companies and oil field service folks that are out there. We are the best on the planet. And I, I actually sold a bunch of equipment up there to the Alaska pipeline. My grandfather uh, is attributed to being one of the key geologists in the discovery of the North Slope. I love Alaska. I do not want to have anything harm our great wildlife up there, but yet the resources are there. Let's go to Donald Trump. Donald Trump told state representatives, Republicans, that Senate Republicans Thursday that he would start drilling oil in Alaska's Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, which is reversing the Biden administration. Quote, He said, we'll get back to that. Senator Kevin Kramer, a North Dakota Republican, told reporters after emerging from a closed door meeting with Trump and other Republican senators, he opened up to it and Biden closed it down. He said, when we get back to it, as soon as we're up there. Congress under Trump lifted the 40 year old ban under energy development in the refuge in 2017. I'll tell you what. He talked about us having more oil than Saudi Arabia and that we should get back to open production. All that does is lower the price, absolutely puts the world on their heels when U.S. is a energy leader. And when you take a look at history, at what great job our American oil producers can do, Let's turn them loose. Let's go to the next story here. Offshore wind energy will come at a high cost to Northeast taxpayers. This is an amazing story. How often are you told that offshore wind is cheap? In fact, in the paragraph, it says we're told offshore wind is competitive with other energy sources, especially because the wind fuel is free. But at what cost? The capital investment for the offshore wind is nearly five times that of oil and gas fired electrification. And the annual maintenance expected to reach twice the current average based on government's data from the BI. That's the first I'm hearing of these huge numbers that are out there, and I've been trying to get those numbers. Rhode Island Energy would only secure about half of Rhode Island's current generating capacity while adding $3 billion to rate taxpayer electricity bills. And that's only half. So when we sit back and take a look, this is absolutely horrific for rate payers in any area 
the other piece of this puzzle is the expense for offshore wind and and the devastation that it is doing on our great wildlife, our fisheries, our whales. All of our fishermen are out there noticing these issues. Let's use what we got out there, but let's have also a plan for reclamation. And anyway, this came from the USA Today, and I find it just amazing that even the USA Today would put something out there saying that it is more expensive. Things are changing on that front. France should ban Russian LNG soon, Senate committee says. I'll tell you, I don't even know how to uh, start on this. France is uh, importing, is the largest importer of LNG from Moscow, and they need to. France is is nuclear and natural gas, and they are the cleanest energy next to Norway in the EU. Our country must include LNG, Russian LNG uh, energy products under the U- European sanctions and stop imports of Russian LNG as soon as possible, according to the non-binding report from a committee led by members of the Green and Republican opposition parties. This is absolutely, that's us telling them to ban them. Why don't we, if we really want to lower carbon, help them out, let's sell LNG cheaper. Why don't we try to really, really cut the cost of LNG and sell it? But no, our Biden administration puts a ban on LNG. So let's tell people to do with less power, not have a resource for it, and it just doesn't make any sense. The government isn't required to accept the committee's recommendation. Really? Please do not listen to our government they do not seem to have the best interests of our allies at heart. Let's go to BlackRock. BlackRock is desperate to shed ESG reputation. I tell you, this one is just absolutely amazing. This actually came through Fox Digital News. And let me read this last paragraph in here. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink may claim that ESG has been weaponized by the left and right, he said, referencing a July 2023 Fox interview with Fink. But he's missing the reality. Everyday Americans recognize ESG for the scam that it is. This is off of DallasExpress.com. But I tell you what, this is absolutely wonderful when they are hiring a BlackRock is adding Delaware County PA based ratings firm Egan Jones as a third proxy advisor beginning in July. Sean Egan, the founder of Egan Jones, was previously ranked by Fortune as the number one prognosticator of the 2008 financial crisis. What they're trying to do is really try to not be associated with ESG funds because they went way off the rails. Dr. Kevin Roberts, president of the Heritage Foundation, said BlackRock uh, move was tardy at best. They have absolutely investing in energy hypocrisy at its finest. They really have defined energy hypocrisy investing. So, Maybe that should be a tagline. Let's go to the next article here. Inadvertent geoengineering. Researchers say low sulfur shipping rules made climate change worse. Let me at first say that trying to get rid of the sulfur and the pollution out of all of our shipping and helping, I kind of like the idea. It was, but it was a sweeping, absolute, devastating regulatory action on sulfur fuels in trying to uh, reduce them. I get tickled at this. Described as the biggest change in the oil market history, the International Maritime Organization, the IMO, enforced new standards on January 1, 2020, to cut their fuel sulfur content down down to 5% from 3.5%. The rule change resulted in an 80 80- percent reduction in sulfur dioxide emissions team of scientists said in a recent paper. Tanyel Wan, a research scientist at University of Maryland and the study's lead author said via the social media, the impact of the clean air regulatory 
regulations could be described as an inadvertent geoengineering event. So let's go through what it, what caused it. That's because sulfur dioxide, a pollutant which forms on sulfur-containing fuels such as coal or petroleum oil is burned, reacts with water vapor to produce aerosols that reflect sunlight back into space. Now we have all the, the billionaires that are trying to put sun shields up and try to do geoengineering and it seems to be a trend that anyone trying to do geoengineering is making things worse so there are three interesting things that people are trying to pin down is why 2023 was so alarmingly warm and the first one that everybody heard of is el nino the second one is that Hunga Tonga, which was an explosive volcano, we, we can understand that. And then the the third was El Nino, the weather, and, and now they're saying that it's the shipping rules. I think there's so many ways that the aerosol cloud interactions could be underestimated in the climate models that they've had an accelerating impact. Here's the bottom line. Man Climate change happens. It is happening. But I personally think that geoengineering and climate modification by man is also going on, but yet it's being denied that it is going on. And man is about the dumbest animal on the planet. I don't know what to believe anymore, but I think that this, the IMO is getting actually handed an an A for effort for trying to clean up shipping fuel. It is a great job, but now they're in charge of climate geoengineer or accused of being a major problem for the heat waves going around. You can't buy this kind of entertainment, folks. Let's go to our last story today. A gas rush could hike UK energy bills and in, in inflation. I'll tell you, the UK may see rising energy bills and inflation due to a possible dash for gas. Are you seeing a trend out there? Following high gas stock levels in the spring, energy prices had decreased according to the fall in inflation. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Europe has relied heavily on interseasonal storage for winter gas supplies. If Ukraine gas storage is compromised, Europe's st storage buffer would fall, could fall further, increasing the likelihood of scramble for gas. This almost sounds like something you do at a uh, birthday, a kid's birthday, scramble for gas. Speculative traders are currently buying gas on the assumptions of a tighter market, which could result in a sharp increase in the January price cap if storage levels are not replenished. They're praying for a mild fall, but all of this is around energy security. Pipelines, getting along with people, not going to war would sure solve a lot of problems. Hey, subscribe, like, share, hug your pets. Um, you can find us on the Energy News Beat dot substack dot com you can find us on energy newsbeat dot co dot uh, com you can also find us on wherever you get all of your substacks i've got some fantastic interviews dropping out please have a great day and keep the faith